Alright, welcome to my first video. Um, bought a new laptop, and I it's an HP Pavilion DV7T, so of course I got the Media Center remote with it. Uh, this is the first video I'm uploading to over a million subscribers on YouTube. Kind of a ridiculous number. Uh, and When you think of tech on YouTube, the first name that probably pops up is Marquez Brownlee or better known as MKBHD. So this is the studio, as you can see. I'm really glad I found it. Everything about this car is fast. Now by the numbers, you would expect that. It's a video series to showcase the most impressive, bleeding edge, super high end, or just straight up awesome tech that makes its way to the studio that doesn't necessarily. I first discovered him in high school when he was still filming in the legendary college dorm room. And as the years went by, he's gotten pretty big. Computing tasks that we used to think, well, I'm only going to do that sitting down at a desk with a full computer, and now people are like, what the heck, I'm doing it on I me. Mean, you have your notes here on a phone, right? Right. I think Android Go. You know, I have two, actually. One consumer one and one developer one. Is that cheating? That's yeah, kind of. That's kind of cheating. That's I do what I want. Okay. Yeah. Do you guys see yourself just keeping a tight ship and picking your, your choices here and there? It's a tough strategic call. Um, between focus and like being, wanting to do a bunch of different models. like. So how did he get to this point where he's getting a million views a day and is one of the most influential voices in the space? Welcome to the Dream Phone 2019. So this is something I thought a lot about. There is no perfect phone. There never has been. And even with tech getting better and better and amazing phones out now, it kind of feels like there never will be. It's coming out and you just you just nail it. You just, you're so, I, you're my go to guy, man. Well, thank you. That's quite an intro. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> That's what we're here to find out in today's analysis of Marquez Brownlee. How did he get here and how you can do the same? So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. At the time of writing this video, he's creeping up to 10 million subscribers. And since he's never publicly stated it, if we estimate extremely conservatively, he's probably making at least $1,000 a day from YouTube ads alone or $365,000 per year. But let's be real, it's probably a lot more than that. This is also not including how much he makes through affiliate links, sponsorship deals, and selling his own merch. So yeah, he's, he's making bank. I'm still at a point where like the YouTube ads are probably 40, 40 to 50%. I don't do a whole lot of sponsored stuff. Okay. If I did, that number would be much higher, but I think right now sponsored stuff is probably about 20%. So 40, 20, and then affiliate stuff being another 10. So we're at like, what, 70 now? So I guess, yeah, YouTube ads is probably bigger. YouTube ads is probably 50% of, hmm. of what the, the streams look like. But it definitely wasn't always like this. To see how it started, we have to take a trip back to the year 2005. Hurricane Katrina was in full swing. The Xbox 360 was just released. That future starts right here, right now. Pop music was actually kind of decent. The best TV show ever premiered its first season and this little known site called YouTube was created. Like, I'm a full-time YouTuber who employs two dozen people, and even I had no idea back then that the site would explode into a platform that would allow people to make a full-time living by uploading videos that other people watch for free. Fast forward to 2009, and YouTube was dominated by cat videos, Smosh, Fred, and the like. And in New Jersey, a little 13-year-old by the name of Marquez just got a brand new HP laptop, probably from Christmas, and decided to record a review of the little media remote that came with it. Little did he know that this very video would lead him to running one of the most respected YouTube channels on the platform. When answering the question on how to make a million dollars without having to wait 20 years, ex-Google Facebook tech lead millionaire explained it like this. Right, let's say you don't want to wait 20 years. And that really has to do with riding waves. Waves open up big opportunities for anybody. And it becomes very easy to make money 
you don't have to struggle so much. There's just going to be opportunity everywhere. And that's what happened to Marquez. He rode the wave of YouTube and gained what's called the first mover's advantage. Whether we look at the wave of venture capitalist investors throwing every dollar they had into tech companies during the dot-com bubble, or the wave of real estate since the Great Recession, or the introduction of Apple's App Store or Facebook's apps and the thousands of millionaires that were minted overnight, riding the waves of change makes everything in business easier. You gain support easier, you make money easier, and you grow a lot faster, especially when you're at the very start of a wave and you have that first mover's advantage. Because when Marquez launched that first tech review way back in 2009, there was this giant unmet need of tech videos on YouTube. Yet there were basically no other competitors out there besides this channel called NCIX Tech Tips. On top of that, this was around the exact same time that the market of smartphones was just about to explode. And as tech companies kept innovating and impressing the public, this niche of people interested in the latest tech products kept growing. And the best way to meet this niche of tech? YouTube. The obvious answer there is tech has been interesting and important for so long that just being in the tech space generally for that long has has done a lot for it. So that was the playing field that Marquez was in, an entire giant marketplace where he was free to experiment, improve, make a ton of mistakes, and even take a break from YouTube for a while and still come out on top before all the other tech YouTubers really started flooding in. Where if he started today where there are way more tech YouTubers, the smartphone market isn't growing exponentially anymore, sure, it would still be 100% possible for Marquez to grow, but what started as a wave or a blue ocean of opportunity over 10 years ago has slowed down and turned into a little bit more of a red ocean of tech channels. So what's the first reason Marquez became the king of tech YouTubers? He had the first mover's advantage and rode the two waves of YouTube and tech. Riding waves and having the first mover's advantage definitely isn't required for success because if it was, there wouldn't be any other new channels getting any traction. But you gotta admit, having those advantages definitely does help. And as you've seen, these concepts don't just relate to YouTube. In fact, the initial wave of YouTube is pretty much over, but that definitely doesn't mean you can't experience Marquez's kind of growth. It might just have to be with another wave in another industry. It's been 10 years since the initial YouTube wave started. The last wave before that was the dot-com wave, which was another 10 years before the YouTube wave started. So who knows, maybe there's another wave happening right now underneath the mainstream radar that you might be the right fit to ride. I've got my eyes on one of them right now, but maybe we'll reserve that for another video. When I started going into some research for this video, I was wondering the same question you're probably wondering right now. Was there a point where everything just started taking off for Marquez? When everything just seemed to click and skyrocket? And if there was, what was it? Let's let Marquez answer that for us. No, I get asked that a lot about like, you know, can I point to a certain video or date or month <laughs> or something? Like what happened to go from like nothing to where it is now? But yeah. it's, I've, I, from to this day, I look back and it's mainly just like a, you can look at charts even. It's just a sort of an upward slope from zero videos to a thousand videos. Hmm. So if there wasn't that moment that just changed everything, what was it then? Riding a wave is great and all, but just because you're on the wave, just because you're one of the first movers, it doesn't guarantee your success. It's not as simple as just waking up one day, noticing the potential of YouTube in the tech space, starting a channel, and then boom, you're MKBHD. And when I was writing this video, I was kind of hoping for some elaborate genius answer. But no matter how much I was pulling my hair out to find one, sometimes the answer is just simple as like this dude is just really obsessed over tech. Because think about it, for a man that practically has everything a person could ever want, fame, fortune, an extremely lucrative business where he just spends all day playing with the latest tech, he has some of the best tech videos on YouTube and is basically just living the life. If you were in his shoes, it would be pretty tempting to just sit back and enjoy that sweet YouTube money. But even though he's made it, what is his only concern right now? Okay. I'm still on that quest of production like I know my videos can be better. Like there, there's yeah. still always a gap between like a great YouTube video and a movie. Of course, like everyone can tell a YouTube video from a movie and everything. But like I, ideally that like seamless like production where I can 
tell the story I want, show what I want to show, uh, and not have any barriers in the way as far as production, that would be ideal. That's probably my biggest challenge. The man has everything and all he's concerned about, the only thing that keeps him up at night is how he can make his videos more realistic. Overly realistic, but to the point where like, if you look at this video on your screen, you'll feel the closest to, to yeah. actually holding it in real life. Like that's the goal. So even though yes, the wave of YouTube and tech and the fact that Marquez started at the best possible moment like ever, did greatly contribute to his odds of success. But it's not the whole picture because there were probably a lot of other people that noticed this trend and started a tech channel around then as well. But as far as I know, you don't hear about any of them today, besides Linus Tech Tips. Because it takes more than just jumping on a wave to gain his level of notoriety. It takes what's called being naturally inclined towards that arena. Natural inclinations being naturally inclined towards something is a term coined by one of the greatest authors alive today named Robert Greene. And in his book Mastery, he explained that being naturally inclined towards something isn't necessarily the same as being passionate about something. It's more about things in life that you've always just naturally gravitated towards on a primitive level for as long as you can remember. Because think about it, what kind of 13 year old makes a video about a computer remote back when no one knew about the potential of YouTube? Someone that's always been naturally inclined towards tech, who's always been intuitively geeking out over the latest tech gadget, who just naturally wants to make things as realistic as possible, not because it's a great business opportunity, but because it's just really cool to him. Um, yeah, there was all these, I did all these tutorial videos, which are just screencasts. So yeah. it's just my screen and a mouse moving. And I was obsessed with getting the highest frame rate possible and the smoothest motion blur of my cursor on the screen. And <laughs> like that, it's so stupid, but like I've always wanted that production to facilitate the story as, as best as possible. I want the quality to be like as realistic as it can be so that it's not a distraction. Because if you're not naturally inclined towards what you're doing, if you're just going after it because you see that it's the next big trend, you're not gonna last 10 plus years. In fact, you're gonna get pretty damn bored after you review like 100 phones that in retrospect are pretty much the exact same phones except for a few slight nuances here and there. So how did Marquez get here? Well, if we look past the great video quality, if we look past all the expensive camera gear and all the cliche crap that everyone talks about like consistency, hard work, and hustle, I think at the core, Marquez's success is partially because he rode the wave of YouTube and tech at the perfect time, and he was naturally inclined towards tech enough to be the perfect fit for this wave. So thank you so much for being part of the Watch to the End Club, you guys. And if you are new here, I'm thinking about calling this new series that I'm doing like the Why I'm Winning series. And I'll link to a few other videos I made just like this one in the video description below or in like the card on the screen and stuff. And if you want to see more and you enjoy this style of video for the entrepreneur niche, please consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell so that YouTube notifies you whenever I release a new video. And in classic MKBHD fashion. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.